Hello, it's Saturday the 15th of January 2022. I'm about a mile outside Sedba. Been walking for a little over a quarter of an hour. And Sedba means that I'm in the Howgills, or soon will be. Today's walk, I'm not quite sure how far it's going to be, maybe 15 miles, taking in Courtly Spout, the Cascade Waterfall, and, and some of the uh, 2,000 foot tops in the Howgills. Hopefully up there we'll get some great views and panoramas. This morning, West Yorkshire was a blanket of freezing fog, icy pavements, poor visibility, but thankfully uh, I was on the train and once the train reached Skipton the sun was breaking through the mist and things picked up quite nicely. So I'm hoping now that's setting the tone for the day and the weather's going to be nice and the visibility is going to be good. I'd also like to thank people for all the good wishes about my ankle. <laughs> it was one of those things on Tuesday on some rough ground I just picked up a little tweak and I, I thought at the time if I look after this it will repair quickly but if I'd been insistent on, on doing the, the, the six and a half seven miles to finish the circuit yeah I think I could have set it back then for a week or two so touch wood all is well in the ankle department The Howgills are a self-contained range of hills with a character all of their own. Geographically they do sit halfway between the Yorkshire Dales and Lakeland and you can see characteristics of those places. In the Howgills they're characterised by very steep sided v-shaped valleys or gills which which cut the range and make the separate peaks. The, the route I took this morning was my usual Leeds Settle Carlisle train until I got to Dent station and then I connected with a what's called a Dales bus service which took me to, to Sedba. reasonable price for a return too. I think it was about six pounds. One of these 16 or 18 seat large minibuses. Ideal for the little narrow lanes between Dent Station, Dent Village and then Sedba. With the, with the Howgills falling between the Yorkshire Dales and Lakeland, certainly in, in terms of the point of view of a, of a West Yorkshire walker. I know that in the 80s when I was fell walking with my dad we, we neglected the Howgills to an extent because we found that we could, my dad could drive to Ingleturn to Horton and Ribblesdale to Buckden in around an hour from home and we could walk in our beloved Yorkshire Dales. But to get to Sedba would take perhaps something like an hour and three quarters because the roads weren't as wide, the roads weren't as quick and we used to find that that sort of time could take us to Windermere and at Windermere you're hearing the siren call of the Lakeland Mountains so you add another half hour, 35 minutes and you're at Langdale in sort of you know the prime volcanic mountains of the Lake District and I think to that extent we used to we used to skip over the Howgills, which is a shame because, like I say, they have a character and a charm all of their own. Uh, for me, it's coming out here now. That makes it quite exciting because although it's not brand new, I think perhaps between 84 and 88, my prime traditional fell walking era, I think we came out here maybe four or five times. So I'm seeing lots of things new with these walks which is great. Right close the gate and on we go.
So that's the low-lying approach mileage over with. And what we've just crossed over is part of the outflow. Courtley Beck, I think it's called. The steep hill in front of the camera, which you can make out a few crags. That's called Yarl Side. What a wonderful day. And you should now, if I stand still, be able to see part, at least, of Courtly Spout. But don't worry, we're going to be getting a lot closer. bottom now of Call and Spout you can see the various sections of cascading water there. Call and Spout lays claim to being the, the longest waterfall in England. It does that because it's a cascade waterfall rather than a single pitch. But I think the longest single pitch waterfall is the one that we saw disappearing into Gaping Gill on the New Year's Eve video. Uh, the longest single pitch above ground would be Hardro near Hawes at the top end of uh, Wensleydale. But this one in its cascade form tumbles down I think 600, 650 feet Quite an impressive chasm there. Very, very occasionally this waterfall freezes and becomes a recognised winter climbing route on ice. But that's once every five years maybe. I came out here once uh, and even at before 7am on a bitter cold morning this part was still flowing not in condition looking at it now <laughs> I'm probably quite glad it wasn't in condition but uh, I don't have the head that I had in the 90s Yes, I'm around halfway up caught the spout. That very steep first pitch is below, and you can see this continuing series of miniature falls soaring up there. On the outside is keeping a watchful eye on us. So this is almost the top of Court of Spout and down it tumbles. Up 
apologies for any camera pan here. Wonderful. A few pitch stones here at the top. I would imagine wet and muddy without these people descending might have uh, had a few scares. wind it's quite chilly up here temperature dropping might be the end of shirt and cap time We can keep following this lesser gill, gain height steadily, heading for the calf, which is the name of one of the 2,000 footers in this area. I'm uh, approaching the top of the calf, but I thought this was pretty good place to catch a view. If you look over there, directly in the centre of the picture, we're looking out towards Morecambe Bay, Grange over Sands area, you can see the sea. If I pan a little bit more, northwards, the skyline starts to get very interesting. Those are the Lakeland Fells there, rising out of a little bit of mist. And again, you can see more Lakeland Fells, just with a few flecks of snow. This is the track to the top. It's typical Howgill country now, with this springy turf and these fractured sandstone on the tracks. It reminds me very much of the, the Lakeland terrain around Coaldale. I'm thinking of uh, Grisdale Pike, um, Grassmore, that kind of thing. It has that sort of feel to it. There's a little gathering there around the trig point. The height of this one escapes me, but I, it's somewhere around 2100, 2002. I'm not sure, it's, it's a comfortable 2000 Fantastic views. Amazing. The long distance views continue to be ever so impressive. I've left the calf behind, you can probably see it now on the skyline behind and I'm heading towards a place where I'll have a little bit of lunch and also I'm hoping as the light changes between now and then I'm hoping for an even better view of Lakeland of T-Bay of Morecambe Bay and the sea so that is that steep-sided ridge behind me there it's quite a, a viewpoint on top might even be a place to do some sort of time-lapse cloud sequence. I've got a little bit of a descent now and a typically Haugillian short sharp pull to the next piece of high ground. Thank you. 
I hope those uh, the cloud sequence and the slow pano turn out okay. I engaged cinematic mode for the slow pano, so hopefully that'll be worth the extra little bit of resolution and processing power. You could see, you still can probably, at the M6 motorway. I can certainly hear it. That's um, where it approaches, near an old Roman road near Tibet, and then it goes over Shap, heading for Penrith and Carlisle. The light isn't quite good enough to see Shap granite quarries. Maybe you can just kind of see a pinkish hue in the centre of the picture, in the distance. That's the famous Shap pink granite. And also, as part of that slow pan that I did, you should be able to see Ingleborough back in the good old Yorkshire Dales. Um, if they're not apparent, I'll maybe add a few captions when I do the video uh, editing. Now, it's almost 2.40 by my watch. And I think that leaves me around an hour and three quarters to get back to Sedba to catch the essential bus, which will then take me back to Dent railway station. I think an hour and three quarters, if I get moving, should be okay. But we might have a slightly reduced number of shots in this next section of the walk. I'm uh, beginning what should now be the final descent to Sedbur. It's 5 to 4, which gives me around 40 minutes um, to get into the centre of town. I don't think it's much more than two miles, so steady three miles an hour should just about see it. Again, it's a beautiful winter. I'm going to say late afternoon, even though it's only five to four, but yeah, things, evenings are getting slightly longer. And this has uh, been a great day out. Well, it's uh, 17 minutes past four. The moon's out. The sun is setting gently. There's a lovely orange glow everywhere. And I think I've got about half a mile to cover in 20 minutes. So that's uh, pretty comfortable now. So, the old summing up part, I think, Today, in terms of views, has been spectacular. I think there have been all kinds of panoramas and waterfalls and views to the lakes, views to Morecambe Bay. Much better than I thought. I, I thought this morning, you know, when I left home and, and it was a freezing fog with ice on the pavements, I thought, well, at least I'll get some close-ups of the waterfall, if nothing else. But this has exceeded expectations. So, good old Howgills, good old Sedba. Um, definitely be coming back here to explore some of the outer reaches of that range of hills. So, for this episode, it's bye for now and see you next time.